So when I was a kid, I remember, you know, during the summers running around with my friends and going to the store and buying bubble gum or comic books or something. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you told me about an experience you had uh, running around with your, your friends and uh, an ex specific experience where uh, uh, they would go to a, 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 you would be walking down the street after school or something and then there would be a store that all of you would come across. Can you tell us that story? Uh -huh. That was later on uh, when I was in high school. Um, <clears throat> we had a hangout. Well, the kids had a hangout, as they always do. It was called McCarran's. After school, everybody would you know, be in little groups and whatever, head downtown. And uh, we'd come up to this store, and my friends would, you know, head on in, we say our little goodbyes and whatever. It wasn't until many years after I had graduated from high school that I happened to run into a very close friend of mine. We had come together in school and uh, the weekend prior to our meeting he had been down home visiting his mother. And so now we run into each other in the mall and he says, Walter, can I ask you something? And I said, yes, yeah, sure. He said, I was down home over the weekend and I was talking with mom and, and, and his mother by this time knew my mother very well because they were on different organizations together. And anyway, uh, and my friend is white. So he says, my mom was telling me that Black people couldn't go to McCarran's. And I said, yeah. And he said, I've been thinking about it all weekend because he said, does that mean that when we would go down and get down by the uh, restaurant and you'd always leave, you'd never come in. Is that why you didn't? And I said, yes. He said, but I just thought that you, you didn't want to come in. He didn't even know. Because the thing is this. This is the, the very strange thing about me, Blasco. I and those of my generation lucked out, beginning with my eldest brother, and sort of like ending with my graduating from high school. When I say lucked out, if there was a golden age in education in that town, it was then. There was a group of teachers that somehow came together. One group for elementary school, one for junior high, one for high school. And Everybody from my eldest brother to myself had all the same teachers right straight through. Mm -hmm. Now in my family, the family was such that each year as one person moved up a grade, another child came in. So at one point there was someone from grade 12 to grade 1 in school. Okay. And as you moved through, the teachers who you met knew exactly who you were, where, what group you're from, what, and what the expectations of you were. That presented a few problems down the road, but that's another story. <laughs> uh, and <clears throat> the world that existed in that educational bubble was to the greatest of extents, completely different to what operated outside the bubble mm -hmm. in terms of social interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like a shield. And yet within that shield, things happened. Mm -hmm. which we can talk about, you know, again, that were vital for who I became why I think and work as I do. But by and large, this education system was a powerful, powerful uh, 
opposition to what was happening in general society because out in general society you were dealing with um, um, racism racism uh, you know uh, all, all that mm -hmm. just like just like the south mm -hmm. 